Welcome back to another V Brown Bay Build Day video. This is the Simplivity 380 Build Day at HPE's campus in Houston. I'm Alistair Cook and I'm joined by Brian Knudsen. How are you doing, Brian? I'm doing well, Al. What are we going to talk about in this video? Yeah, so this video we're going to talk all about data resiliency and, and how Simplivity takes very seriously the fact that when customers put their data on our systems, we want to make sure that it stays there and is available to them because a loss of data can oftentimes lead to a loss of business. So. Once you put data down, you want to ensure that it's going to be there. And come back with the right right numbers when you uh, when you ask for a return. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes wrong data is as bad as no data. Indeed. Yep. So, what features have we got in the Simplicity platform that yeah. assures the protection of this data? Yeah. Yeah. So it all it all starts with the the ProLiant DL380 um, and all the availability features it brings. So redundant power supplies, redundant fans, the ability to detect memory errors and and correct for those. All those features that you kind of expect in a high-end uh, server platform these days. Enterprise-class server platform. Exactly. Um, so that's just keeping the node up. Let's, let's keep the disks available. Now, we also use RAID, so using the smart array controllers to be able to protect the disks. So now we've got failure from disks within that node. So if we lose a disk, the RAID takes over and is able to, to resurrect that any lost data from that perspective. And that gives us, you know, another layer of protection within that node. And all and this, at this, I was going to say that's protecting everything that moves: the power yep. supplies, the fans, the disks. But these are all flash configurations. That's so right. It's it's, but it's not moving. Yeah, yeah. But you know, they they still they still burn out. They have a lifetime. Um, you know, we 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 use high end disks so that they will last for a while. But at some point, it's they're going to fail. We they're all know that. They're a potential failure. Yep, for sure. So, you know, at that point, now we've we've protected. It from loss, but you know, by using the RAID set, we're now able to detect um, changes on the disk, so bit rot type problems, or you know, at some point, gamma rays come off the sun and and hit those hit hit platters, they hit the the SSDs, and they may flip bits. Um, so we have regular integrity checks that go on to ensure that that data stays um, stays in an in, um, integral fashion, so that we don't have the wrong data. Come across, and is that built into the smart array controller, or is that a function that's done by the Simplicity um, OVC, the controller? Yeah, that's that's all built into the smart array controller, controlled by the OVC. So the OVC has direct control of that RAID controller in order to be able to execute those types of things. So, yeah, it's all done in hardware, so it's happens super fast in that regard. Um, so then, what we do is we actually, you know, take a pair of of three eighty nodes and are able to move those together um, in order to protect data. So every virtual machine that exists in a SimpliVity cluster is going to exist, is going to be mirrored, all that data across two different nodes. So that if one node were to go down, if, if we had a catastrophic failure around something like a motherboard or CPU. That or would, an operator error. Or an operator error. You know, people, people are dangerous in the data center. Um, so in that case, we want to make sure we've got all that data on another node. And that point, then, um, it's how we write the data. So I've got a, a few visuals here that we can look at that, that demonstrate how we read and write data across two different nodes. So what you see here is a, um, a depiction of two nodes um, with, with the x86 platform, the, the DL380, as well as the hypervisor and virtual machine. And um, we've got virtual machines, one of which is the virtual controller itself. The other one is the business application. The data store that's being presented from the virtual controller has a virtual disk for that VM. And then down below, we've got the accelerator card that we use to, to process all the dedupe compression. So it's an integral piece, as you'll see. And the disk controller that's supporting that SSD RAID. So as writes come down from the virtual machine, as typical fashion, it's going to get redirected through that NFS data store. And the virtual controller, of course, is presenting that. So all, all local traffic at that point. The very first thing that virtual controller is going to do is mirror it over to the other virtual controller. And, and that pairing happens per virtual machine at the time it's created. So if you've got a cluster of four different nodes, they any virtual machine could be across any combination of, of two any, nodes. Any pair of nodes. Yep. At that point, then, both virtual controllers are going to give that to the accelerator card. Dedupe compression is going to happen. Um, once that's complete, it's going to acknowledge back to the virtual machine. So the virtual machine moves on to the next block at that point. Now, what SimpliVity is going to be doing on the accelerator card is optimizing that write. So let's line up all the blocks into a single single stripe write for that, that RAID set. And that's then going to be placed down onto those disks. 
and now presumably we're, only if it's new unique data. Of course, yep, yep. If it's it's all going to be unique data, and it's all going to be laid out in a, in a in a sense that we only have to do one stripe right across all those. So only one calculation of that that parity, okay. for example. Yep. So that's that's how data is data is written well, down. Hey, that's also important for the SSDs because that's going to be a large block write rather than wearing the SSD out with lots of small writes. Exactly. Exactly. That's 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 part of it. Um, you know. The reduction of I/O in the first place, as well as the the optimization of how many times we send commands down there, helps both with the performance of things and with the uh, durability of the SSDs. So when we look at it from the opposite direction, from read perspective, it's it's pretty simplistic. Um, we're going to go straight from that virtual controller to the disk controller. So. The accelerator card itself isn't a part of the read operation because you know you don't need heavy lifting in order to do that. You, yeah, you're not doing any deduplication in a read. You're just Correct. rehydrating data out, pulling yep. data out of those unique blocks. Yep. And when we write the data down, it's it's intended in a way that we, you know, it's going to be efficient to to rehydrate it to send it back. And of course, the data then goes back to the virtual machine. So pretty pretty standard way of of um, moving data in and out. There and the read path is entirely inside the node where the VM resides in. Exactly, exactly. So very, very efficient from that perspective. Data locality is an important design element as to how we how we built our, our software stack. So at this point now we've got data across across the two nodes. Uh, we've got protection from RAID. So we call that RAIN plus RAID, a redundant in, a redundant array of independent nodes. Easy to say. Um, plus the RAID protection, so kind of a belt and suspenders, trying to keep our pants on as, as much as possible. The effects of that end up being that when we use the RAIN plus the RAID capability, we have the option of being able to pr really protect data very, very well in a cluster. So as we lose disks in our medium and large nodes, um, we're using RAID 6 at, at the individual node levels. And what that means is we can lose two disks in every one of these nodes and data is still fully available. Virtual machines haven't been affected. Um, no availability has been lost. We just had a few alerts in the UI to yeah. tell us that there've been yeah, we've, failures. Yeah, we've got a very angry vCenter right now. It's it's freaking out, um, to say the least. But um, you know everything is all, available and running. All of our VMs have continued to be operating throughout. Yep. All of our backup schedules are still operating. Correct. Yep. Exactly. Um, so the functionality uh, is. And we haven't down. lost any capacity either. We haven't suddenly reduced our available capacity as this failure has occurred. Yeah, yeah. Since this is happening in hardware under the covers, you know, the, the overhead for RAID is already accounted for in what we're, we're able to actually utilize. So yeah, exactly. So then, you know, a bad day goes to a worse day and we actually lose a node. Um, and of course, that's, that's a critical thing in an environment and we're already running around with our hair on fire. Now we do have a situation where virtual machines are going to utilize vSphere HA. They're, they're going to have to be restarted on a different node. And that's fine, because they can still be started on those other nodes. The data for those virtual machines is still available. So all of the data for all of the VMs on that node that's failed is also on one of the other nodes exactly. in the cluster. Yep. Different, different nodes for each uh, of the virtual machines, mm -hmm. but the second copy is somewhere else. Yep, yep. If, what's most important there is the copy is there. So we can bring that up and, and make that available. So this is a high level of, of data loss, and you know, it's I like to call this a, a really, really bad day in IT. Um, I, I think there's probably some resume generating events going on for yes. this level of failure. Yes, yes. This level of failure is, is something that is extremely unusual in IT, and that's really what we designed it for: was to be able to, you know, no system's perfect, but it's let's get through, you know, all the potential issues that could potentially be out there. So, in in summary, you know, it's 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 a multi-level protection. It's it's relying on very high-end hardware. Um, it's relying on you know standard industry best practices around protecting RAID, multiple power supplies, that kind of stuff, to be able to ensure that nothing goes away in the first place. But then being able to ensure that data is in multiple places in case you know something really bad happens and we do lose an entire node. Um, that loss of a node could be that it just lost too many of the, the disks and the RAID mm -hmm. array said, I can't continue to operate that. Absolutely. That would constitute a loss of a node as well. Absolutely. Yep. 
Yeah, it's usually number of disks, a motherboard, or a CPU type failure, the types of things. Or well, operate at error most often. Yeah, yeah, or I shut down the wrong one, oops. Yeah, um, um, that, that's not going to generate a support call to SimpliVity, but it could be a resume generating. <laughs> for somebody. Yeah, I mean, even even the uh, OmniStack Accelerator card, which we saw as a critical part of the right path, even if a failure on that or a failure of the OVC and the, the SimpliVity software stack goes down, that's not going to take down the node. That's going to take down the storage stack on that node, and again, the ability to pull data from another node means that those virtual machines don't don't experience an outage at all. Their availability it's just a, is a, a pause in I/O as there's a switch over, and then the VM continues to operate. Yeah, well, well within the the limits of of so a Windows. It retries. Yeah. So yeah, um, all all together, a, a highly available environment for people's data. Great. Well, thank you very much, Brian. Yep. This is another video from the V Brown Bag Build Day with the HPE SimpliVity 380 platform. Keep an eye on the playlist and join us live for more V Brown Bag Build Days.